Hello everyone, welcome back once again. I am Nicodemus Kane. Today is September the 19th of 2022. I just was looking at the calendar to see when 923 was, and it's right at the end of the week. Just uh, keep your eyes open. Keep your ears and your eyes open. Um, everybody is talking about they can feel it. Something's coming. Something's happening. Something's something's going on behind the scenes. Those that should not be, the powers that should not be, they are uh, they are planning something. I don't know what yet, but because of the last weeks worth of events, two weeks worth of events, um, something is definitely going on. They just had a. They just had a death, a, a major elite death, and usually things tend to follow the uh, the elite deaths. So keep your keep your eyes open, especially for 923. We have had so much symbolism and coding and everything in 923 that it's getting very hard to ignore at this point. Every year, every year, people start talking about it. The buzz starts coming around again. Um, just be prepared. Be ready, be prepared. Uh, speaking of those powers that should not be, I actually had somebody ask, when I talk about they, the all-encompassing they, um... Who am I talking about? Let me see if I can go to it directly. I'm going to I'm going to answer the the question directly. So it's not uh it's not like, you know, I'm not going to this is this is going to be this is going to be where I talk about it and then I'm never going to talk about it again. No, um I'm going to answer the question directly, but I I wanted to So it was when we are referring, who are we referring to when we say they? It's like it's their plan. Well, it's it's them. It's those powers that should not be. It's those those people that have been in charge uh, pretty much from the very beginning. Uh, we have seen over and over again that the symbolic the symbols the symbols the family bloodlines if you will the um, the same gods the same everything let's just say everything since the beginning of time since the creation of time we have seen people over and over again go back to the same things and use them constantly. It's like the eagle on the back of a quarter. You know, that eagle has been on the back of money since Roman Egyptian times. The symbolism of the obelisks, the symbolism of the statues, the symbolism of the gods over and over and over again. Uh, we've talked about the, um, the Native Americans worshiping gods that look exactly like gods that were in Babylon, that were in Assyria. When we talk about they, we talk about those that have been there since the beginning, that have actually kept their bloodlines as clean as possible, that have, well, I don't want to say clean, I want to say um, <laughs> they're definitely dirty. Uh, I want to say that they've they've done their best to keep their families together and not mix in with the useless eaters of the world, which is us. We are the useless eaters of the world. To, according to the elitists, the people that are on top right now, we are... We are the useless eaters. We are nothing. This is why they want to reduce. They want to reduce the population. 
is what they want to do because there's too many people. There's too many people using too much stuff. Those were Ted Turner's words exactly. Um... Others have said, you know, we want to reduce the population down to where it was 500 years ago. And there, it has been written on the Georgia Guidestones that it has to be 500 million people. 500 years ago, the population was 500 million. Or, or it might have been 1,000 years. I don't even remember what she said. Jane Goodall, for crying out loud, the monkey woman, wants to talk about depopulation. Um, but it's it's only it's only those super high ups, the ones that have all the money, that have all the wealth, that are telling you that you are the problem with the world falling apart. It's not them. It's not them that have all the money, that can afford to have all the big factories, that can afford to fly the planes, that can afford to do all of this crazy stuff. It's not their fault. It's your fault. It's your fault because you're consuming way too much. Even though they own, what did they? What did the the thing I saw? They they own like forty percent of all the wealth of the world. Probably more than that. Is it forty percent or sixty percent now? The last I heard was forty percent. Anyways, these these people, we call them the one percent. The people that are on the top, the top one percent that own. 50 60 percent i don't know how much of all the wealth in the world are telling the rest of us the other 99 percent of us that are living in poverty or below that we are the problem that we are consuming too much that we need to be cold not them it's amazing how they will say <laughs> there are certain people i'll, I'll point out bill gates Let's start with him. That he will say that he can help reduce the population growth by 15% by giving people shots. And yet, he has, what, four kids? Five kids? Is it four or five kids? In which people have said he has never once given them a shot ever. So wait a minute. Hold on a second. So this guy is telling us that we need to, to slow our population growth. And yet, he's got more kids than I do. What is that? I, you know, that's it's it's this ridiculous uh, double standard. You know, rules for me but not for thee, or rules for thee but not for me. I've, I've said that's the, like the third time now. I've said it backwards. I'm so bad. I'm so bad at that. Rules for thee but not for me. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but anyways. But anyways, that's what it is. That's what it's becoming. It's it's the the top billionaires, millionaires, billionaires who are all related to each other. They are. They are all related to each other. It's the actors, the musicians, the politicians, the scientists, the um, the leaders of whatever you want to call it. They're all either brothers, sisters, cousins. They're all married to each other. They are all part of the same families. It has been known for years that, especially when it comes to actors, that uh, people will come in, they'll change their name, and they'll just be, you know, somebody we know. Oh, hey, you know, it's, it's such and such. But they changed their name to get there. We're finding out now, 40 years, 50 years down the line, there are actors now that look exactly like actors that came out 50, 60 years ago. It's because they're related. Because you are more similar to either your grandfather or your grandmother than you are your own parents. I mean, you share similarities between your parents, and there are people that will, you know, they'll dead look like their mom or dad. I get that. But you will be more similar in features to your grandparents or your great-grandparents. It's just something that happens. It's a natural thing that happens. So we're seeing that now. We're seeing that now more and more and more as, as people are talking about clones. People are saying, oh, look, there's clones everywhere. 
You know, they, they look exactly alike. And there are a lot of actors. There are a lot of actors. There are a lot of politicians. There are a lot of whatevers that they are, they look exactly like. Uh, the biggest one is Justin Trudeau looks, is a clone of, of uh, Fidel Castro. He's just Fidel Castro without a beard. Uh, you can go look. It's, it's a thing. Um, that's not... I don't think that's cloning. Some people will, will disagree, and that's fine. We can have, we can have disagreements because we don't really know for certain. Um, if it were cloning, these people would be perfect clones of each other. Uh, I don't, I don't see these people coming out looking slightly different if they're clones because it should be the same exact genetics. These people should grow up the exact same way, unless they're getting plastic surgery as they come up. I don't think it's that. I think it's bloodlines. I think it's people having kids, especially when you put in the understanding of satanic blood rituals, satanic blood rites, sex magic. When you put it into that kind of context and you hear the stories of children being born if they're not immediately sacrificed. You will hear the stories of children being born and then given to other parents so that other parents can raise them. This, It's one of those stories that I heard several years back, and I never really gave it too much thought. They were talking about the, the, the top elitists, whatever you want to call them, them, they, where they would have a child and give it off to another family. Maybe the other family couldn't couldn't have children, or maybe the other family couldn't. I don't know what other whatever. Maybe there's some kind of maybe there's some kind of spell or spiritual whatever that happens whenever you swap children. I don't know. But I think that's what's going on. I think it's. It's bloodlines. They are keeping it as close to the cuff as possible. They can't, you know, they're not out there like, you know, mating between brother and sister. They're not doing first or second cousins, but, you know, they're they're keeping it pretty close. And you're having these actors, musicians, politicians, these people that run the world. You're having these people come up now. They all look exactly alike. And it's not just white people either. It's it's every it's every race because it's all one worldwide elitist system that they're all keeping themselves together. Because the biggest part of all this, they, those people at top, at the top, they want the one world order. They want the entire world to come together as one, the way it was back when Nimrod ruled with the Tower of Babel. Now, a lot of people don't, don't say, you know, a lot of people say, well, Nimrod wasn't real. The Tower of Babel wasn't real. Okay, you can think that all you want. You can think that all you want. But the people that rule over you, they believe it. They believe it. They want everybody to come back together in a one world rule where they get to make the rules and you have to put up with it. They want everybody to speak one language. They want everybody to have one religion. They want everybody to have one culture. They want everybody to have one currency. And the only way they can do that is to rule over you. Because there are people out there that just want to live by themselves. They want to live alone. They want to live in peace. They they want to they don't want to have to have some some person that's on the other side of the, the world telling them what to do 
when it doesn't fit their beliefs, their values, or their ideals. So they have to rule over you. And there's so many people out there right now that it won't work. A one world order right now will not work. That's why they want depopulation. They want to take away a vast majority of the people so that they could they could herd a smaller percentage of the sheep so that it would be easier to control them. And there's a lot of people I've I've heard these arguments too. I've these are all arguments I've heard against, you know, this whole one world order thing is Oh, you know, people just aren't that evil. People won't do that. You know, they're they're just trying to they're trying to fix the world. They're trying to help the world. Nah, I don't think they're trying to help the world. They're 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 trying to rule the world. Everything that they have done for the past two years, and it has shown. It has shown so much, especially the past two years. Um, they are going out of their way to tell you, this is the way it's going to be. There is no more new normal. We are never going back to how you should say normal again. That was Klaus Schwab, by the way. The um, it was he, the head of the WEF, the friggin' Bond villain extreme. Which I think he is just. I honestly think that he is just a. Uh, he's just another face. He's just another face for the evil. I think there's somebody pulling his. You know, I. I I absolutely think at this point, because they, those people in charge, the the people at the top, I think they they know that we are so brainwashed and manipulated now into believing whatever they want us to, that they can do that. They can straight throw a Bond villain at us. The, The movie ideal of a Bond villain... Of, you know, somebody that has the accent, somebody that wears the weird robes, you know, somebody that has that look, you know, the shaved head and the, you know, he's, he's sitting at the chair and he's got his hands crossed. Around. It's a Bond villain. I would expect to see him in a movie. You know, is he, the only thing he's missing is like a white cat that he's, you know, slowly stroking as he goes. It's the Dr. Evil ar- archetype. It's what it is. So... um but he's he's got the whole thing. But I think that, and I've seen this in other places too, is that we are so brainwashed now that they're just playing with us. I mean, I've I've already said before that you know they're laughing at us constantly. Those people at the top, they are laughing at the little people at the bottom, because we keep falling for it over and over and over. Again. And it's not entirely our fault. You know, you, you say this, you say these kind of things, and, and I can, from from an outsider's perspective, I can somehow detach myself from the truth, and I can hear it, and I can, I can kind of think, you know, I get it. it. It's when somebody tells you that you have fallen for something, that you've been lied to, and you fell for hook, hook line, and sinker, it, it hurts you. You start growing this cognitive dissonance. You start separating yourself from it because you, in your mind, you don't think you could be tricked or fooled. You know, you you will fight against that notion that, oh no, I can't be tricked. That's not me. I've been lied to before. I can't be lied to now. Surely these people can't be lying to me. Surely these people haven't deceived me on this one thing. Yet, if you stop and really look around, they've deceived you on just about everything. Because everything they taught us in schools, everything they taught us uh, about life, about the way things work, it's not what people are finding now. There are truthers out there that go out to the libraries, that go out and find the old books, that go out and find the old uh, newspapers, that that go out and they find the old, the things that we need because we can't trust the internet anymore. The internet is not a good place to search for information. 
even though I did find out the other day that you know if you use specific terms you can find what you're looking for um, but it's not a place it's not a good place to find anything that we need to go find the books the the old ancient books this is why that's why old books a lot of old books um, especially if they had such a low pr low printing back in the day they're so expensive there are guys out there right now that are reading through the old books that cost 300 400 500 somebody said that they they dropped two thousand dollars on a book uh just to be able to get into the meat of it just to be able to to, to read what it was and what they found out was things happened in this country that are not what our history what the what our teachers our educators have told us so it's the old axiom of those who win the wars is that the word axiom i think it is it's it's the old it's the old uh, it's the old saying let's put it that way that because I don't know if, if that's the right word I should be using it's the old saying that those who win the wars write the history and we are waking up from 300 500 maybe even a thousand years of bad history I've said it before that I think that our history is only it seems like our history only really starts from like the 1800s and up. It's like everything we know is from the 1800s. Music, um, books, philosophy, you know, all of these. They, they can say, oh, well, you know, we take some of our philosophy from some guy that lived, you know, 2,000 years ago or something. Well, that's fine and dandy, but the vast majority of it is only coming out of the 1800s. You know, you talk about the great philosophers of, of our time, the great philosophers, period. You will get two, maybe three, from 2,000 years ago. The rest of them will come from 1800 to the 1930s. It's like music. It's the same way. You might get two or three people that were pre-1800. The rest of them came 1800. Um, books things like that you will get the same things politicians you'll get the same things every now and then you'll get a guy be like, oh you know such and such ruled you know during the 1600s or whatever you know you'll get things like that but you will only hear about the last 200 years of your history and we don't even know if that's real so they are the ones that that are in charge of all this they are the ones that tell you the way that it is tell you what to think they don't want you living here anyways they've been lying to you enough they they i think it's to the point now there's been a lot of people that have been talking about this they had to get it to where we have robots that can do all the work for us and we're slowly approaching that um one of the one of the one of the ones the the most interesting one somebody said was they want to be able to live forever because that's the first lie you know that's the that's the that's the evil satanic lies oh surely you will not die if you eat from the fruit that god told you not to eat they want to live forever. They don't want to die. They don't want to die because they know when they die, there's nothing for them. There's nothing for them but a pit of fire. Because they would rather live in there in righteousness instead of trying to find God and find peace and find truth. They don't want that. They've done the worst things in the world. And we've read this over and over again in the Psalms and, and even in Isaiah, we've read it. There will be no peace for these people. They have laid traps and ensnared the people of this world over and over again that they have 
they have truly given up any ability to be saved because they chose power. They chose the lie. They chose to manipulate, hurt, and destroy the people of this world than to try to make peace because they wanted, you know, they wanted everything. It's them. It's they. It's those. Again, it's that 1% of the people that own 60% of all the wealth in the world. I'm just going to go 60 because I think it sounds right. And I don't remember what it was. I was watching a video. They were they were talking about, um, you know, what people thought the distribution of wealth was in the world versus what it actually is. No, it, it was it was what they thought it was. Uh, compared to what they think it should be compared to where it was and where it was was so skewed um so skewed differently than the other two that you know you can see it you can you can see just how bad they have manipulated us they have all the money in the world and they still want more it's, it's absurd but it's those people at the top that they have they have lied to us over and over and over again constantly in order to get more power, more fame, more wealth. And they have done it in secret over and over and over. That's the biggest thing, too, is they have done it all in secret and in private, uh, away from places where we can hear it. But it has seeped out slowly. You, know, you can call it the Illuminati. You can call it the... Bilderberg group you can call it the you know the g6 g9 whoever the hell it is um you can call it the beast with 10 horns you know with the crowns and the kings and whatever um it's all the same thing these people have been there for years for years and years and years working in the shadows in order to in order to make sure that they always stay on top. They have lied. They have cheated. They have murdered and destroyed. In order to make sure that they stay on top. And they are the ones that you constantly hear about. That get to live to be 90, 100 years old. They're the ones that, you know, get to stay in these places of power for 40 50 years they get to be failed politicians and yet somehow magically get to you know rule the country <laughs> rule the country for 50 60 years they you know career politicians we've heard these things before but it happens those are them that's that's those are those are the they that I that I refer to the that ruling class and you don't have to uh, you don't have to believe they're not real but they are they are they're constantly there it is a conspiracy it is it is it is an absolute conspiracy um of wealthy elitist psychopaths and a lot of these people are psychopaths because they just don't care about the things that they do they really don't. If, if half of these people gave two shits about what they did to the people at the bottom, they would stop. But they don't. They don't care. They keep steamrolling over people. It is the worst uh, Stockholm Syndrome I've ever seen since the Queen has died. And everybody wants to talk about it. Like, the last time I heard this woman, she reigned over some of the worst garbage in the world and you still want to go with it you want to worship at the feet of a eugenicist and that's what she is she's a eugenicist she is a person who thinks that she has the ability to rule over you whether you like it or not simply because of her bloodline and that's where all this goes. That they're all eugenicists. Is that they think their bloodline is superior. Some of them, like the royal family, they put it right out there. 
we are better than you because of our blood. Um, others, like the United States of America, they have to hide it a little bit more, which they've done very well. And they have said, you know, you can choose your president, but every president that you choose is not only someone that we pick, but they're also related in some way, shape, or form, which they are. Some some kid went out and found out that every president, even Obama, they're all related. They're all related back to, um, um, who was it, some Italian, some Italian monarch. They're all related back to him, every single one of them, in some way, shape, or form. Now I get it that yes, you know the bloodlines could branch out to the point where they could in, they could touch everybody, but are you related to that king? Am I related to that king? Are your friends related to that king? And see when that when that report came out, I uh, the first thing I said was, I want them to do actors. Because I bet you you'll find the same thing as in actors, too. I want them to do actors. And then I want them to do musicians. I want them to start following the family ties of musicians. Because that's in there, too. It's, it's the... Some people have a problem with the musician thing. Because it's like, oh, surely not, you know, the five guys that supposedly get together, you know separately let's talk about any band from maybe like the 70s or 80s you know it just happens to be four or five guys from you know completely different places that just happen to get together and get famous you know surely not all four of them are in some kind of bloodline no it doesn't have to be all four of them just has to be one just has to be one that happens to have a father that happens to be a you know famous pro tennis player if you know that reference give yourself a star um, or your, let's just say you're the lead singer whose father happened to have been the, the, uh, happened to be the captain of the ship that got false flag attacked that started a major war that lasted for six years, you know? Give yourself another star if you got that reference. Or, um... Well, some of the other big ones. If <laughs> if you now they've they've hit this bloodline, but I'm gonna say that that uh, that there's a couple of them that the kids again, it's the kids that you know they get in there, and then you find out that you know they happen to be related to somebody else, or they happen to have some. There was another one that. That was another one that somebody's father was in the army. Who was it? I know one of the Beach Boys was. Because I just saw a thing about Manson. Charles Manson. And they were talking about uh, people who have family who are in the army. Who are you know high-ranking generals. Um, which is crazy. You talk about like the Laurel Canyon... You know all the all the bands that came out of Laurel Canyon, and every single one of those kids is re, is you know related to a an army general or something. Now they may come out and they may not they may not sing the praises of the government. And they may not you know do the whole thing. They may have been acting like they're counterculture. Maybe that's what the government wanted. You know, the counterculture of the 60s kind of ruined all the good stuff of the world. Uh, a lot of people say, oh, no, but it made people more free. Did it? Did it really? Did it make people more free? Or did it just give you an excuse to do more drugs to distract you from what they were really doing to you? All the counterculture really did was tell people that they didn't have to have any form of moral compass they could do whatever they wanted, have it all the sex they ever wanted, go out and be the hippie children of the world and just live their lives and do whatever the hell they wanted to. Don't worry about what's going on behind a curtain. 
That is exactly what the counterculture movement did in the 60s. And every single one of those bands that helped started that, every single one of those artists, every single one of those, what do you want to call them? What is, are, they're not philosophers of the 60s. I'm not going to call them philosophers of the 60s. The, the authors, the, um, the people that were pushing it, every single one of them, it's all they ever did. It's just push this notion. You can tune in, tune out, turn on, tune out, do whatever. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about what's going on in the background. Don't worry about it. It'll be all right. Your government will take care of you. Daddy government will be doing just fine. All they were doing was they were like, oh, let's still got to stop the war. The war is bad, you know. The war is bad. We need to stop the war. We need to live in peace, live in harmony. You have no clue why that war started. Most of them won't even listen to it now. Those boomers ain't, they're not going to listen to it. You think you can go up and you could be like, you know, <laughs> you think you can go and convince any of those people that Jerry Garcia was hired by the CIA to dole out LSD at his concerts? You think you could convince them that Jim Morrison was the son of the captain of the boat of the very war they were fighting? Yeah, could you convince them that Grace Slick, she was somebody's daughter. I cannot remember who it was right now. She was somebody's daughter. Um, who else was it? The other one I was hearing about, um, Crosby, David Crosby. He's another one. The names just kept coming up. Neil Young, I'm sure somebody's, somebody's son too. All these guys, all of them. I've heard their names associated with somebody else in one place or, you know, at a time or another. If I ever hear them again, I'll write them down. You know, I'm not very good at writing them down because, again, every time I'm listening to these videos, it's usually while I'm working and I'm focusing on work. But when I hear it, I'm like, oh, wow, I'll store that in the background. You know, I'll store that in my head. But you hear these things over and over again. It's it's this, it's these family bloodlines. And it's in movies, too. You see it in movies. You ever wonder why so many of these actors look alike, why they look like other people, why they happen to look like... Why they happen to look like musicians. You ever wonder why the drummer of the Red Hot Chili Peppers looks exactly like Will Ferrell? That's why. It's bloodlines. It's blood related. You ever wonder why... Oh, here's, here's a good example. Here's one that I, I keep in the back of my head. You ever wonder why you're watching a movie and you see somebody, an actor, over and over again that you know they can't act their way out of a paper bag. They're just garbage. And it's usually like a secondary character. You know, you hear the stories of, you know, somebody was able to become an actor because their uncle was the producer or whatever. You see that time and time again. You know, just some actor you can't stand. You just can't stand the guy. But... Sure enough, he's in just about every other movie, and no matter what, he just cannot act his way out of a paper bag. Could be a woman, too. Just, they're terrible. <laughs> Absolutely terrible. And it's because they're part, of the, they're part of the family. They wanted to be an actor, so they make him an actor. They force this on you. Just because you watched a movie and you saw somebody and you thought, man, that's a he's a really good actor. He's a really good, you know, that's a really good guy. You know, that's, that's amazing. He should win awards. Doesn't mean that he's a good actor. It just means that they put him in your face enough that eventually you, you fell for him. Now, there are guys that are good actors. I get that, sure. Um, but honestly, acting is not that tough. You just have to not freeze whenever you're in front of a camera. It's just, it is what it is. But have you ever wondered why they only use so many actors for so many things? There are 330 million people in America. There are 7.8 billion people in the world. And yet you only see the same 
50 people over and over again? Is it because they're the cream of the crop? No, it's because they're the, it's because they're the seed of the family. Well, that's a good one. That's a good line. Seed of the family. I don't think we're going to be getting into a Bible verse a day because I think we're going to keep talking about this. But I'll tell you what, that's a good one. It's not because they're cream of the crop. It's because they're the seed of the family. I got to take a drink of water because my throat has been acting up for the past couple of days. Oh, okay. But it's true, man. It's true. And like I said, the, the further we get, the further we get away from the actors that were in the 50s and the 60s, the more you start seeing what people call their clones. And I don't think it's their clones at all. I think it's their grandchildren. I think it's... I think it's their grandchildren. It's either their grandchildren, maybe even their great-grandchildren. I don't know. But you see it more and more and more. And you see that, you know, two of these kids look exactly alike. That's probably because they're the same father. I don't care if it's a different name. Everybody in Hollywood changes their name. Uh, you ever, you, you see it whenever they're talking about actors in the world, and then they, they point at politicians. It's the same thing. Who was it? it um, oh, Melinda Gates. The fact that Melinda Gates looks like a cross between Kevin Klein and Robin Williams. And people will say, and I've heard this one before, and I don't know if I want to follow it. You never know. But people will say, oh, look, it's, you know, Robin Williams never died. He just became Melinda Gates. <laughs> Whatever. Um, I you know at this point i wouldn't put it past them i could i could believe it only because they think they can get away with every with anything they want to because people just aren't paying attention i can i can see that i can understand that you know that's hey that's fine <laughs> i can get that but no i think it's more like they're just part of the family they're just part of that same family yeah they just they just happen to be able to do that It's, again, disassociating myself from the truth of it, being, you know, the outsider looking in, I could hear what I'm saying and I would think, man, I am... That's crazy. That's crazy talk. That's the most insane thing I've ever heard in my life. No. I don't think it's crazy or insane at all. You have to understand, again, by seeing how the, how the symbology of the world has continued on over and over and over again, how these, these secret factions have only built these things up within the past 200 years because they've they've stayed secret they've stayed hidden um how how evil really works how they would go out of their way in order to ensnare you in a trap to lure you in to let you be entertained by devils. These are all things that are in the Bible, actually. Um, to understand how that works. Which I do. I do now. I really absolutely understand it. Uh, but to have all of these things come together, fit together, mesh in this this puzzle. You can see it. I can see it. Again, from an outsider's perspective, you just think I'm the most craziest person in the world because, oh no, it's not, you know, that's not somebody's grandkid. That's not somebody's son. Surely that, you know, such and such is not related to, to some politician somewhere. Well, I mean, you know, it's either that or the, the human gene pool is way more shallow than we think it is. And these people just happen to look like each other. I don't know. 
or again maybe maybe they're actually you know maybe there actually are just actors that pretended like they died and decided to take on another role because it's all about money it's all about power it's all about fame and fortune so that's what they want they want to take over the world and if you want to take over the world with them you have to sell your soul to it so many people have said it over and over again i've watched so many videos of so many videos of musical artists that have said it over and over again i was a musician i've heard it myself over and over again i've heard people talk about it i've heard the guys that will be offered the record deals that they didn't take it because part of the record deals say that you have to give up way more than you ever make and i've i've heard it constantly so you gotta sell your soul to the devil it's um dylan said it twice Bob Dylan said it twice. I didn't know he said it before in an interview back in the 80s, but he said it again in the 2000s. He said, you know, I have to keep doing this because I am beholden to a power higher than myself. You know? <laughs> You're the, you know, the Katy Perry's of the world. You know, she said she sold, sold her soul to the devil. You hear about uh, Robert Johnson, the guy, the first guy that went down to the crossroads. You hear the, there was a myth back in the day that Eddie Van Halen went down to the crossroads. There was a myth that um, Randy Rhodes, same thing. These are stories that we heard back in the 80s, back in the 80s, 90s, especially whenever I was coming up because I used to get guitar magazines and I used to read them front to back and you'd hear it over and over again. It's like, ah, oh, ha, 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 it's crossroads. That's funny. You know, did you hear it? Uh, Jimmy Page, same thing. You ever wonder why? You ever wonder why so many people are able to take Led Zeppelin lyrics and or Led Zeppelin songs and play them backwards and hear satanic messages? Duh. <laughs> you know, there's a couple really good. Uh, there's a couple of really good documentaries about um, Stairway to Heaven. It's a song that shouldn't exist. It's a song that should never have been played on the radio. At a time whenever radio was only really truly playing, you know, short rock songs, four minute, four minute rock songs, you know, disco was still a thing, but they, you know, the, the rock stations were, they would play, you know, shorter little things here and there. They'd come up against Stairway to Heaven, Stairway to Heaven's what, seven, eight minutes. They'd play the whole damn thing. They even used to cut, cut down, um, uh, Freebird. They cut Freebird down from like nine minutes down to like, what was it, five or six minutes. You just cut out the solo entirely in order to make it fit on the radio station. But they never touched Stairway to Heaven. It was always the whole song. And that's the one song that they, you know, you play it backwards. You, you play the song backwards and you can hear stuff come out of it. But I've heard enough of it. I've heard enough of that to know. I've seen enough of that to know. I've I've lived enough of that to, you know, ex I've experienced enough of that to know. And, you know, actually met bands that were right on the edge of becoming huge. And then they said, you know, we just can't. We can't sign over everything in order to make it big because that's just too much. It's It's not only just signing over their music. I think that's that's part of it. I think that's you know the first step of it. You have to sign over everything you are over to a record company uh, in order to become famous. And once you're in there, um, somebody said at one point there's a price point. Once you get to a certain amount of money that you start making, that's whenever they say, well, if you want to take it to the next step, you're going to have to sign this new contract. And that's the one where they take you. That's the one where they take your soul. And they say that they say that what you do is you 
have to perform a ritual of some some type um sex ritual and they film you in in a very uh a very bad position and they hold that over your head and if you step out of line they pull that tape out they'll say well look what you did look what all your adoring fans will see if you uh you know you step out of line you step out of line twice and they they will publicly humiliate you which we've seen that before too we've seen all these uh all these pop stars and starlets go crazy in public they'll go nuts and we wonder why or you know they'll get online and they'll say crazy stupid things and they'll do stupid stuff that will tarnish their image and people will think oh yeah that's that's they're just you know, it's just uh the popularity getting to them or something else and they might have to be stuck in rehab and they might have to go to rehab and sure enough the uh people are calling it the blonde hair club because when you go into rehab when you come out of rehab for whatever reason whether it's an actor whether it's a, a, a singer musician you come out of rehab and your hair is bleached it's a weird thing go look that stuff up um you will see these guys that come out of come out of rehab and they're bleached and it's like what is that what is that weirdness and and it's not don't think that your favorite artists are um somehow getting away with it don't think that you know well i listen to such and such and they've never had to worry about this and that and no it's pretty much everybody i was broken when i saw and i really put the put the pieces together about metallica because metallica is my band you know when i saw it and i really looked at it with new eyes i said shoot it happened to metallica too all this time you know it's been like that and people never really noticed it people never really noticed it until now it's because again the veil is being lifted we're starting to see it um but you know actors are the same way i'm sure actors are the same way once you hit a certain you can see it when okay so the goldbergs i don't know if anybody knows this, this is a tv show the goldbergs um one of the girls on there i cannot remember her name save my life uh Haley or or a tanya i think it's her name i don't know uh, anyways, when she first appeared on that show, I said the things that she probably has to put up with being famous are scary. Um, because you can you can go check all this stuff out. I think it's interesting. Everybody likes to talk about the uh, the pedophile rings in in uh in hollywood uh cory feldman or haim feldman is it feldman <sighs> it's feldman because cory haim died cory feldman has been the one he's been the most vocal about it for the past couple years um talking about the number one thing in hollywood the, the biggest problem in hollywood right now always has been and always will be pedophilia and of course, a lot of people have dismissed it. You know, oh, yeah, it's just Hollywood. It's just people saying that. And even though I grew up in the 80s. I was born in 77. That tells you how old I am. I grew up in the 80s. I heard the stories. I, For whatever reason, I paid more attention than other kids. I don't know why. I always watched Insider, you know, Inside Edition, or I read the newspapers, or I read this, and I read that. And, um, but you always heard about it. You heard about Drew Barrymore. You heard about the, the girl from The Exorcist. Or not The Exorcist. Um, well, even then, whatever her name was, you heard about her too. No, the, the one from Poltergeist. The, the girl from Poltergeist. You heard about, you know, you heard about the kid from E.T., the boy from E.T. You know, he talked about 
things that they would do while they were on the set. Uh, you would hear the things about Shirley Temple. I didn't really hear too much about Shirley Temple back in the day. I heard things, but nothing huge. It wasn't until you know the past 10 years that I started hearing about just how bad the Shirley Temple stuff was. You go back and you watch those movies, and you see the way they filmed her. You see the way that they... they the way that the, the guys used to talk to her in the movies. It's sick. It's depraved. You... I'm not going to tell anyone to go and watch that stuff because you don't have to because it's there. But there are... There are several documentaries, um, several videos... You have to find them on BitChute now because YouTube has, has removed them. But I've seen them on BitChute where um, they show you. They show you how they would film her. They would show you the camera angles, the positions that they would make her stand, the way that they would she would sit on these guys' laps, where these guys would put their hands as she's sitting on their laps. <sighs> Some of them made me so sick I had to stop watching them because it just it was too much. But that was, it's always been there. It's just went back in the secret. But you kept hearing it more and more as you went through. Uh, in the 90s, you, you heard about different things. I heard, I think it was the guys on, um, was it the two boys on Home Improvement? I think had something going on. Um, even the, the kids on like growing pains, you know, they had things, they were, they were talking about stuff going on and, and, um, uh, I don't even want to, I don't even want to discuss, um, what was the one full house, <laughs> get into that stuff. You know, you hear, you just hear about the things, the back rooms, things, the little things that the the kids kind of talk about you know they they like to joke about it a lot of the uh, a lot of the comedians a lot of the the actors like to joke about it they like to joke about how you know oh such and such was that bob saget being the worst <laughs> these people are not your heroes <laughs> you are literally being entertained by devils um these people are not your heroes but then you go into, uh, even in music, even in music, you start hearing it in music. Do you, do you realize how many musicians sing about underage girls in their songs? Oh man, you, you come back to music, come back to music that you, you listened to back in the nineties that are, you know, just songs that you've just heard and you never really thought about. You might have heard in a school dance or you might have heard on a radio or something and you're just like, eh, you know, it's it's that song. But with new eyes, with open eyes, oof, you hear it and you're just like, wait, did he just say that they were... What? It's crazy, man. It's absolutely insane. It's crazy. It's been there all this time, and we've been too distracted by the enjoyment of it to really see it. Um, this doesn't even go into politics, you know? We, we just had a big one uh, in politics where, you know, they're doing their damnedest to say, oh, no, it's fake. You can't even say the name of it because... YouTube will pull it down. That's how secretive they want to be about this stuff. They don't want us to know. But these are the people that are in charge. These are the they that I refer to. It's been like this for a long time. And it's nothing new. There is nothing new under the sun. These people have been doing this for years and years and years there's one picture that i talk about um somebody asked the question why does this picture exist and it is a picture of several older gentlemen standing around a it's like a pedestal 
And on top of the pedestal is a child. And it's like two of the guys are holding the kid and one of them has a knife and they're cutting a the kid. And on the, on the floor around this pedestal are dead babies or dead kids. You know, they're all babies. Uh, they're probably all, you know, two or three years old. And it makes you ask a question. Why does this picture exist? What is this? And that's not the only one that's out there. There are others just like that of groups of old men standing around a pillar, standing around a rock, standing around something, watching another person kill a baby with a knife. And these aren't like pictures from like the, you know, whatever, whatever BC. These aren't from Rome. These were modern. These were modern age pictures. And it's disturbing as hell. Why was this a thing? I don't even know if I could find those. I wish I could find those so I could show you. It's just absurd. Um, uh, let's see if I can find them. Old paintings. Let's try paintings. Uh, because I'm searching this, I am probably going on the list. Oh my, here we go. Of course, there's the old Saturn. <laughs> it's the old Saturn eating his kids. Um, why is it whenever you look at uh, pictures of, of men killing babies, you get the Virgin Mary? What? No. I wouldn't even know the first place where to actually look up something like that, even though I know they're there. Why is that a thing? Oh, I'm not even... It's It's scary. It really is scary to uh, think about the massive amount of images that we have because you know all of these paintings that were done supposedly in the 1600s 1700s they are you know all the ones that we see they're tame <laughs> to be perfectly honest but when you kind of go out past the stuff that um that you're not supposed to see the massacre of the innocents with Herod. Well, there's one. Um, I'm trying to find this one that I was talking about though. Of course, then again, you've got Saturn eating his kids. Kronos. Let's see if I can find another one. Boy, you look up child murder. <laughs> it's another list I'm getting put on. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm not finding it. I, don't, I, I wish I could. Know, I wish I knew the name of it. But it, again, it's what it is. It's black and white. It's guys standing around. It's guys standing around a pedestal, and the one dude's got a knife, and he is cutting into a cutting into a baby why why is that a thing kids still alive why what what is going on there and i don't want to hear any any excuses of like you know oh it was back whenever they were bleeding you they were you know they were doing bloodletting that's what it is and they were just letting letting blood out of the child and they kept making mistakes oh here we go oh this is nice myth myth about uh, certain people killing children and yet, I gotta find the one with the babies, huh? I will let you guys see it. I'm not gonna see. It's just not in here, though. I, it, I'm not finding what I'm looking for. I'm not finding what I'm looking for. Even though here's another one with. Oh my goodness. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Here we go. 
Okay, here we go. Oh, oh, it's ritual murder. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try not to do that. <laughs> All right, I'm going to try to pull this in here without, without, um, oh, goodness. And it's so small, too. What is the name of this? Can I find a better, better picture of this somewhere? Oh, wait. How about if I try this? I know, guys. I am sorry. I am trying. I am trying. Okay, let me search this. Let's see if I can come up with something. Nope, that didn't help me. That didn't help me at all. This is not. Now, okay, seriously though. Is, um, I can't read this. The picture is so small. The picture is so small that I cannot read what it says. This is. This is crazy. And now I lost. I can't get back to it. Well, anyways, they're out there. They're out there. I'm sorry. They're out there. The picture is so small you can't see it. You can't even see the damn thing. How are you supposed to... I can't show it to you if I can't see the thing, you know? But again, it's a, it's a picture. It's an image. There's like six or seven guys standing around a pedestal. There's a kid in the middle of the pedestal. And they are cutting into the kid... And all around the floor, dead babies. Dead bit. What is that? Why is that a thing? And I'm not going to buy this whole uh, this whole thing with because apparently that says that this was <sighs> Let's see if I can find it here. That says, this is part of ritualistic murder by certain people. I'm not going to say it because, again, we might get pulled. But it was ritualistic murder from a certain people that the Nazis claimed they do. Now, I'm not going to... I'm not going to try to stamp on anybody or you know not going to try to say yes or no all i'm asking is why that image exists i'm not even going to ask for you know the reason why they would have reprinted that picture but why is it okay So when you look up ritualistic murders in paintings, boy, you find all kinds of weird stuff, man. Holy smokes. Looking up the crazy crap so you don't have to. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> wow. How did we get on this again? Oh yes, we were talking about talking about Hollywood. <laughs> talking, talking about Hollywood, talking about how they uh you hear the stories. You hear the stories of the ritualistic murders and you hear the stories of all these things and a lot of people say, "Oh no, that's just stories. That's just things." And yet, on the same token, these kinds of paintings exist. These kinds of things exist. They have always existed in the world. These people have done this for years upon years upon years and They've continued to exist. Why? Why have these things continued to exist? 
Why are these images a thing? It's interesting how there's uh, there's other ones. <laughs> there's ones right now that talk about talk about how it's it's the martyrdom of it's it's about a kid being martyred, a kid being martyred. Really? Well, then why are the other two, four, five kids on the bottom martyred as well? Five small boys are laying on the floor. The blood of a sixth is being let out, which is caught in bowls by men surrounding him. No, that's what this friggin' says. I'm not kidding. That's what this says. You can call it sick and demented all you want, but that's what it says. I'm not gonna lie. Why'd this get cut off for? All right, anyways. Yes, um, this, not this, that, of course. This, why does this image exist? What is, what is going on here? Why do these things exist? That's exactly what it said. It said it's these are these are kids with stab wounds. Kids, what, what, how old do you would think that is? What, four, five, three? Why do these things exist? Why is this world so sick and demented? It's because it's always been like this. I wish I could re read Latin. I could probably type all this stuff in. And figure it out but of course certain people say that this is uh, this is either martyrdom Michael a martyred boy from 1540 he's martyred what about these other kids are they martyred too it's fucking ridiculous <laughs> nuts, man. This is just nuts. Falsely accused of secretly killing Christians as a form of ritual murder by anti Semites. Ah, uh, nice. This accusation is commonly called blood accusation or blood libel because they believe that Christian blood was used in rel religious rituals. I am not saying anything about anybody. What I'm just asking is, why does that even exist? Okay. All right. Um, trying to pull this back on track here. It's amazing that... It's amazing that you hear them say that... You say that about that picture. We're just talking about that image. Um, you hear them th th talk about that image like that. Oh, sorry, I had a, I had a yawn. That was great. Um, I woke up early, by the way. I woke up at 4.30, 30 minutes before my alarm went off, and it sucks. But you hear them say that's what they, they made those kinds of pictures because that's what they thought it was. Okay, that's what it was back in the day. But you have children of satanic ritual abuse that come forward and say this is the exact kind of stuff that they used to do. I don't care who it was. It don't matter to me who it was. I'm not going to point at anybody and say, oh, it was them, it was this, it was this, it was them. It's all satanic. If you're killing children in order to collect their blood in any way, shape, or form, you're evil. That's that's evil, period. That's not even, you don't even get to, you know, blame a certain people or culture or religion, whatever. You can do whatever you want. Um, but that's evil. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's just wrong. But you hear about that. You hear about the satanic ritual abuse survivors that talk about this kind of stuff. I've heard the stories. I've listened to the videos. I've, you know, I've done it. 
I've I've gone through that stuff, and they say over and over again that some of the kids, if it wasn't your turn to die, you had to watch while they took certain kids and would kill them right in front of you. The one, the worst one I remember hearing was a girl said that they used to impregnate her and they used to pull her baby out when her baby was born and they used to kill it right in front of her. I know that's sick and I know that's demented and it, it sucks to listen to it. It, it hurts and it sucks to listen to it and nobody wants to listen to it and it makes people turn off and it makes people squeamish and not want to hear it and it, what will happen is you will turn off to it and you will never come back to listen to it but you have to understand these rituals have been there since the beginning of time it has been talked about over and over again. Uh, sacrificial rituals have been there forever. Especially things like this. I have talked about the fertility and death rituals that happen in the world right now. You have Valentine's Day and Easter. The celebration of Ishtar, Ishtar the the female fertility goddess people don't like they don't like that because oh well easter is supposed to be a christian holiday nah christian holidays have nothing to do with pagan rituals you want a true christian holiday it is passover god told you to follow passover christ celebrated the passover we didn't change it just because Christ died. That was part of the Passover process. He was the first fruits. There is a feast called the Feast of First Fruits when he was revived, when he was pulled back into this world, brought back to life. You celebrate the Passover because God is your bread. God is your, it is your, uh, he is your, your, your bread of life, your, your food. He is the word made flesh. And you take in the word. There's an, there's a, analogy of the word being bread being meat it is not a literal meat it is a meat when you start off you take in small doses like a child you take in the milk but as you get older you are able to eat meat you are able to get the the thickness of it you know the the real part of it get to the to the meat That's what Christ was. He was the word made flesh. Eat of my flesh. Eat of the word. Eat of the word. You have to listen to what he said. People hear that and think, oh, cannibal Jesus. Oh, it's cannibal Jesus. Eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. You are fools. You are fools thinking that you know something that is not there. No. That is not what it says. You have to take it in the context of what it is. It is the flesh. It is the word. You take it in, and then you live on that word for a week. You do not take in any more bread for a whole week, for the whole Passover. Because man does not live on bread alone. You live on the word of God. There is a whole other aspect of that. That's what God says. You shall not eat bread for the whole week. 
but you are there. It is to signify what the Israelites went through whenever they came out of Egypt. At the same time, it is a, to signify not eating the bread of anything else but the Word of God. There is something truly, truly spiritual going on there. Anyways, anyways, I'm getting off topic. Um, the two fertility feasts, though, Valentine's Day and Easter. Yes, Easter. This is, we already went through this. Um, in which they are both fertility festivals. Which I even said, you, you read the book of Jasher. Uh, you may not think that Jasher may be anything important. And hey, that's up to you. That's fine. Whatever. But I'm going to tell you this right now. Jasher knows more about what happened in this world than you ever will. And one of the one of the things that's inside of Jasher, it says that there were four festivals that happened every year that coincide pretty well with the two solstices and the two equinoxes. It's when the sun goes up, the sun comes down. But they would get together and they would share each other's daughters. It said that neighbors would share the daughters of their neighbors. They all got together. They all had parties. They all got crazy. They did this in the valleys of Sodom and Gomorrah and the other three cities, whatever they were. But they would do this four times a year. Sure enough, we have four festivals. Or we have, not festivals, we have four holidays that line up pretty close. Even though, again, I say the calendars are off just a little bit. But they line up pretty close with our solstices and our equinoxes. They moved them. They moved them because they moved the calendar. The calendar is off. I don't, I don't know how much the calendar is off, but the calendar is off. Things are, are off. They've twisted our entire history. This goes back to what I said before. The winners of the wars write the history. So our calendars are off. We can't trust calendars. We can't trust anything. But there are four holidays that they celebrate. Valentine's Day, which was based off of an old pagan holiday called Lupercalia, where they used to get together and the men used to write the names of the women that they wanted to have sex with and put them inside of a box. Which is what you what little kids do in schools. They write Valentine's cards out and they make little boxes out of these little paper things and they put them on their desks and they put the things in the thing and but then they would have sex all night. It's a fertility festival, which is what it is. You take your woman out to out to dinner, and you buy her flowers, and you buy her this all buy all this garbage, and then you take her out and you have sex. That's what you do. It's a fertility festival. And I've already said nine months later, November December, there is a there is a killing festival. When the sun is coming up, you procreate. Because you're happy that the sun is up. These are sun worshippers. The sun is up. They're happy. They're having sex. When the sun goes away, they try to bring it back by appeasing it. By having sacrificial rituals. I've already said this before. September and October through December. It is one huge sacrificial ritual. In order to try to get the sun to come back up. Because they are afraid that the sun's not going to come back up. God has already said, you will know whenever the end of days comes is whenever the sun won't come back. They want to appease the sun. They think the only way that they can appease the sun is to have sacrificial rituals over and over and over again. But you have the fertility festivals. And then you have the sacrificial festivals. Rituals. Holidays. Sorry. Sacrificial holidays. In which... It lines up with the satanic ritual abuse survivors that would say, as soon as a kid was born, they would pull it out and sacrifice it. It took me a long time to try to figure out. It took me a long time to try to figure out how it worked when Easter was in like the end of the end of March, the beginning of April. And they had to immediately sacrifice a baby in December. December 25th. It's like that is, it's so close to nine months that I don't even know if it would fit. 
but it fits as soon as the baby's born. Ugh. And now they know how to induce children to make them born on a very specific day. And if not, I heard, I heard a ritual abuse survivors say that they would just cut the baby out. They would just have a C-section. They'd cut the baby out. They'd kill it right there. That's disgusting. I know. It's sick and disgusting, but you have to understand this is what they do. This is what they do. And you, if you don't want to believe this, if you want to think that everybody that ever said all this stuff is lying, then that's fine. Whatever. Go enjoy your football. Go enjoy your football. Go, go enjoy your bread and circuses because there's not much I can do to help you. This is stuff that we've heard over and over and over and over and over again. I am 45 years old. I have spent 30 years of my life hearing these things. It has only been within the past five years of my life since my eyes have truly been opened that I have been able to stop and say everything I have heard for the past 40-something years means something. But everybody just wants to put it out of their head. Oh, it doesn't mean anything. Don't worry about it. It's nothing. No, it all means something. It all adds up. It all points right to this point. It is evil, tried and true, 100% tried and true. It is darkness and death and pain and misery from a, a group of elitists, this 1% of the world, and 1% of the world, people say, oh, 1%, that's not a lot of people. Bullshit. 1% of the population of the world is 700 billion. Is that right? Is it, no, is it 70 billion? 70, or 70 million. 70 million, not 70 billion. 70 million people. 70 million people. That's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot of people. That is a lot of people. That is a lot of families. That is That is being able to install at least one politician in every seat of power that is able to install hundreds of actors that is able to install musicians everywhere and then the rest of them can be CEOs of companies or whatever they are born different than you. They are not raised the same as you are. They are not to have the same values that you are. They are not to have the same, or they, they are raised not to have the same education that you. They have the hidden knowledge. They have the hidden understanding. They know the mathematics. They know the, the hidden words, the meanings. They know different languages. These people are way more intelligent than you, and they don't care about you because they're raised with different values. If you were raised your entire life to think that there was a people that was below you and beneath you, you would think that these people were below you and beneath you. You would not have the empathy to be able to care. That's what's happening. These elitists, these rulers, they sit there and they let murder and genocide and whatever happened and it has gotten to the point now to where the grandkids the great grandkids the great 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 grandkids of the eugenicists are now just straight coming out and telling you we don't want you here their fathers their grandfathers their great grandfathers they never would have said it because they would have known to keep it a little bit more hidden these kids now they don't care they don't care. They understand that there are, they have way more power than everybody else. So they don't care. And they are pushing to implement what they want. And what they want is a one world order in which they get to rule over everything and that we are nothing. We are all wiped out because they don't need us. They don't need us anymore. They got robots now. Robots can pretty much run everything. They only need they only need about 400 million of us. 400 million of us for 100 million of them. Sounds about right. That sounds like a, a you know five servants per person. Think about that for a second. Four servants per person. Still. Four servants per person. 
You need to wake up to it. You need to wake up to it. You need to see it. You need to understand it. When I talk about them, they, those people, that's what I'm talking about. Those people that are, they don't want you here. They don't want you here. It's your politicians. It's your actors. It's your, it's your musicians. It's your idols. It's the people that you watch on TV. It's the people that you watch, you watch in music. It's the, they're everywhere. And it's the same people. They're all related and they don't care about you. Anyways, the other, um, the other three or the other two, uh, for anybody that knows about the four holidays, the, you know, it's Valentine's day, Easter, Halloween, and, and Christmas. That's Lupercalia, the festival of Ishtar or Isis, if you want to, um, Halloween, which is all hollows Eve, which leads into the day of the dead, all saints, you know, the whole thing. Um, and then Christmas, which is, um, Oh, don't do this to me. <laughs> it's, 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 um, Julius Caesar's birthday. Come on now. Oh no. Why am I not? Oh, come on. I can't think of the name of it. Christmas pagan roots. Here we go. Saturnalia. Holy shit. <laughs> I forgot. Saturnalia. The worship of Saturn. The worship of Satan. Saturnalia. <sighs> Man, it took a second there. I forgot. I totally forgot. That's the four. That's, there's two. It's two fertility festivals and two murder festivals and they are all four of them are right around the equinoxes and the yeah except for maybe except for maybe ishtar because that's you know it's kind of in there and you know lupercalia is kind of back a little bit um i still contend that we got one right dead smack in the middle um which doesn't really have a holiday because it's going away you know, it's, it's whenever the sun starts going away in the end of june june 22nd i think it is and um it starts going away but i still say that america celebrates america celebrates the sun going away we have july 4th now if you believe in your own history and this is actually in the books the founding fathers of America didn't sign the Declaration of Independence until after the solstice. Until after the solstice, because they wanted it was a week after the solstice, because they wanted to have some kind of a you know ritual or something. I don't remember what it is. That's actually in the books. I have actually read that on a some page somewhere. So that's you know kind of an official thing. But then suddenly out of the blue, it's like you have July Fourth, where everybody shoots fireworks up into the air and it's like it's a celebration of the sun it's to it's to proclaim to the sun that you know we want you to come back we're celebrating you before you leave at least that's the way i see it i don't know but it's all it's all there and that's, again, that's who they are when I talk about them. And I, I know I've talked about this stuff before, but I don't know, maybe I just had to re, re, uh, re-look into it, I guess, to kind of get another you know idea of what it was. It's, it's only when you go back and you look at everything again you start from the you start from the perspective of we'll take 
all the history that they gave us. They gave us. We'll take all the history that they gave us, and then we will wipe it clean. And we will take what people are finding, and we will take how things appear in the modern world, because again, things appear in the modern world that don't make sense with what our old history says. And we will take those snippets of old history and put the puzzle together and find any kind of logic and truth that we can. Because that's that's all we have now. We don't, we can't, there's no... There's, uh, so many people will say, oh, you know, you're just not, you're a denier. You're a denier of everything. I am a denier of everything at this point because nothing makes sense anymore. It's all weird now. It's all messed up. Nothing, nothing logically fits. And I'm just talking from a standpoint of history. Uh, if you talk about current events, man, as people, people are, uh, Man, they would just believe any old crap that they put on the TV at this point. Somebody said that it was Richard Nixon that said that the American people will not believe anything until they put it on television. I believe that. I absolutely believe that. Um, <laughs> I need to stop so I can get going because it, uh, it is a Monday, which means i got to get to work. Um, and thank you all for coming around and listening. Uh, the only other thing I can think of, uh, there was something else I was thinking of too. I was thinking about it in the shower. Um, I have said it before. The people that use pronouns are masochists. They're egotists. Now, what I mean by that is if somebody comes up to you, introduces themselves, hi, my name is whatever, 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 and then gives you your, their pronouns, that means nothing to you in the conversation that you're having with that person. I've kind of, I think I've talked about this before. Um, you can have a conversation one-on-one -on -one and never refer to yourself in the third person. Never refer to the person you're talking about in the third person. The only, re the only way that you would ever use pronouns like that is if you're talking about someone later on oh i met joe the other day and he said or i met Susie the other day and she said that's that's when it happens when you're one-on-one -on -one with the person you don't ever have to worry about it unless you're just weird but that's an egotistical thing it's not about it's not about when somebody is talking to someone, it's about when someone's talking about someone. That's why I don't play that game. Anyways, all of those that like to put the whole, uh, I was thinking about this, all the ones that like to put the whole, uh, their pronouns are they or them. The first thing I said is, well, then that means that there truly is a demon resting in you because you're referring to yourself as a duplicate person. It's a duplicity. That's what it is. You're you're you don't want to be you don't want to be binary, but there's definitely two people in you. Um, <laughs> but at the same time, I it it popped into my head. What if every time we refer to they, to them, the people on top? What if that's who they want to be? They want to be the they that we always talk about because every time we talk about you know the powers that should not be the people on top i call them they that's what they want that's their plan that's that's what they have in mind for us maybe that's what it is maybe it is this hive mind culture that all of these pronoun junkies that are pushing over into they or them Are wanting to be a part of that I, it's just something i was thinking you know like they're so they're so lost 
and so broken. They can't do anything by themselves. So their hive mind has to tell them, you know, be a part of us. Be one of us. One of us. You know, kind of like that. I don't know. It was just something I was thinking about. But I mean, seriously, it, it's... Pronouns are, are for egotists. They're for egotistical maniacs. And if you're using pronouns, you should stop. It's just, it's ridiculous. Come on. Come on now. You're you're signaling to me that you want me to refer to you as something that you may or may not be. And it don't matter to me. I don't give a shit. It doesn't matter. If you're going to talk to me person to person, then it's not going to matter. So what? It's exactly what I'm going to say. I haven't heard anybody say it yet, but I swear I'm going to say, so what? <laughs> I swear. And I'm preparing myself for it, too. It's like somebody's going to say, you know, oh, I'm, I'm such and such. I'm going to be like, so what? So? What, what, what difference is that going to make with our conversation we're having right now? Why do I need to know what you identify as? I don't care. I'm talking to you as a person, as a human. It doesn't matter. And if I refer to you later, you're not going to be in a room with me. It's not like I'm going to walk 10 feet over to another, to somebody else, and then point back to you and say, well, he was saying this, or he was saying that, or he's the guy you want to talk to. I'm not going to do that. Because your circles and my circles are probably not going to cross like that. So no. And even then, it doesn't matter. I'm going to refer to you however I want to refer to you. Because what I do with my life is what I do with my life. I can think of you however I want to. So you think about that. Because to me, it doesn't matter. There's a lot of people out there, it doesn't matter. And it never has mattered. The only reason it matters now is because people are looking for just another reason for people to talk about them. To have an excuse to be put in the spotlight. That's all it is. They couldn't get something from somewhere else. So they have to create some new thing in order to be better or more special. You're not being better or special. You're you're crying out for for attention like a child. And I'm not going to treat you like a child. We could talk. Let's let's talk, man to man. Let's talk. I haven't had that happen yet, but it's going to be interesting when it does. And I'm probably going to get called all kinds of names. And you know what? That don't matter either. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I want to refer to myself as as a racist, sexist, homophobe. <laughs> I, might as, I might as well. I might as well just drop every one of them. I'm the guy that, that you're fighting against. Hi. You know, you're going to call me every name in the book and half of them aren't going to stick because you don't know who the hell I am anyways. So whatever, chump. Yeah. You know? It doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. It's the whole thing. It's just so silly. So silly. All right. I am definitely going to stop now. Um, thank you guys for listening. I just wanted to get that out of my get that out of my head. Um, man, we talked about a lot, didn't we? They, those people, those ones in charge, that one percent. They want you dead. They don't want you here. They don't want the history that's here. They don't want the they don't want the they don't want you to know the truth because if you knew the truth if you knew the whole truth you would change you would change your life in order to fight back but they don't want that they want you to be Manipulated, hurt, and destroyed. So that you will not fight back against them. 
And it has shown over and over again that as soon as people stand up to them, they they go into full lockdown mode. Uh, it's it's amazing. It's amazing. It's everything that's happened over the past two years. When people have actually stood up to it, they have gone into full lockdown mode where they have said, "Oh no, you no, know, you're not. We can't do this. You not do that. You know, we're going to call you every name in a book, and then we're going to arrest you, and we're going to do this, we're going to do that, and all that stuff." And because they know. They know they're they're the truth holds up to all scrutiny and lies will fall apart. You have to put more effort into protecting a lie than you do have to than you do have to protect the truth. And they are going out of their way to protect a lie. Holy smokes. Holy smokes. All right. I'll talk to y'all later. God bless everyone. You take care of yourselves and uh, always fight back against them. They, those people. All right. See you later.